Welcome to our church. All right. Good morning. Welcome to What's New Worship. I'm Pastor Andy Combs, and uh, we're glad that you guys are here. This is a come-as-you-are service, and that means that um, God loves you right where you are, and He's going he's gonna to do that, and He loves you enough to uh, put up with all the stuff that you've gone through and been through, and He loves you enough to, uh, to save you. So uh, we're glad that you're here. We're glad to, to get to worship together, and we're going to do that here in a second. But let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, invite Him to be here. And uh, because we can do nothing without him, right? So let's pray and ask him to be here. And not that he's not always here, but sometimes we haven't prepared a place for him. So would you pray with me as uh, we go to the Lord and just ask him to prepare your hearts for today. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this this building. Uh, God, and we don't want to get caught in here. This is not about... Uh, building walls, Lord, it's about breaking uh, walls down, Lord. So I pray that we would uh, figure out how to do that and reach continually into our community and make a difference, God, to see people come to know you as uh, their Lord and Savior. And Lord, uh, bless the worship today. Uh, get us excited about that, God, because it, it, it prepares our heart, God. Um, you sent us out to war, and uh, Lord, in Scripture it says that the, the people sang. They sent the choir out to, to uh, prepare for war. So, God, I pray that we would recognize that. And then, Lord, pray for the uh, fellowship time. God, we've got some new people that are here, some new people that are walking in the door. I pray that we would meet them and pray with them and ask for prayer requests. Uh, Lord, that that would be our focus, is not to get around and chit-chat with the people that are here because we already know them, but, God, to meet the needs. People show up here to have needs met, Lord. So I pray that we would do that. And then, Lord, for your word that will be spoken, God, I pray that it will mess us up, that it will change us, that it will dig deep into our souls and that we'll let it. And then, God, that, you, that we'll walk out of here different than when we came in. Lord, that's our prayer. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. In your precious name, so be it. So uh, let's try this. To whom much is given? Much is All right. So the new people are like, uh, I don't know what's going on. So what we're trying to do here at What's New Worship is I'm going to give you something from Scripture. And then when you get something from God, there's a requirement back on it. This is not, and Dave put this on his Facebook yesterday. Once you figure this out, that everything beyond Christianity, everything past the point of salvation becomes for other people. Nothing of yourself. Your entire life then becomes, what can I do to see others come to know the same God that I know? So to whom much is given, much is required. required. So March Madness, right? That's the big... uh, that's the big talk right now, and everything's going on in ba- college basketball, and it's a fun time of the year, especially for sports fans. And even non-sports fans, you filled out brackets, and you have no idea. And some of you ladies that have no idea what's going on, and you just have picked a favorite color, and, and you're winning. And uh, that's how it goes. Um, some of you men may be doing the same thing. I don't know. Uh, pretty much the, the odds are terrible to, to get them all right, but... March Madness, and I wanted to think about that because I think, I think this march that God has asked us to do, and we are, if you've come to, on the Thursday nights, Pete is talking about this army that we have joined. When you become a believer, listen, I, I, I don't know how to, to get this into people's minds. When, when you kneel and ask Christ to be your Savior, you have joined an army. Unfortunately, that scares some people off. As a matter of fact, we're going to, we're going to get to that. John, I think it's funny. John chapter 6, verse 66. Is, um, the disciples, that's a weird number, right? John 6, 66. I, I want you to hear the verse of what's going on there. Look, look because this is, this is why I used it. The disciples have been given a choice. In John chapter 6, verse 66, the disciples have been given a choice. Hey, do you guys want to lead or do you want to keep following? March Madness. I mean, this is going to get tough. There's going to be some tough things that you come across in your Christian life. And, and I, I, I don't know how this service is going to go. I, I, I have a picture in my mind of what I believe God wants to do. I believe there were some things God showed me. There's probably an invitation that could take place in probably about four or five different spots in here. 
And I'm not going to wait for you to wait for me to get to the end. I mean, I don't, you shouldn't wait for me to get to the end before you get things right. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> you might not have time. Let's just be real honest. So if you hear something that God speaks to you about, you get it taken care of right then and there. You don't need me to pray. God gave us Jesus to connect to God. There's this March madness, and um, it gets tough. And he's given the disciples this choice. You can either follow me, or you can go now. And isn't in that, in that the devil? I, I, the 666 meant, meant to me, like, in, isn't that what he does? And this is what I'm going to say to some of you guys today. <laughs> Invitation one. Here it is. Some of you have been going through all this already. You've been through all this, and it feels like a struggle. Let's make a, a solid choice right now. I'm on board. When we think of March Madness, go on to the next slide for me. When we think of March Madness, I put upset on there, and you got the little guy beating the big guy. Matter of fact, it happened last night. My, my pastor, Pastor Farrell, is probably uh, going crazy because NC State beat the number one team in, in uh, college basketball or the number one in their section in college basketball last night, and, and that just doesn't normally happen. But, but if you're going to fill out these brackets, you have to predict these upsets. And, 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 and today's whole passage is out of Judges chapter 6, 7, and 8. And there in Judges chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, it says that the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites because the power of the Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in the mountains and clefts and caves and strongholds. And I started thinking, these are God's chosen people. They should be able to win every battle. If God is for us, then who can stand against us? And so I put that upset there because this is an upset. Here's the problem. We think, <laughs> we think that the battles that we are facing are bigger than God. You all didn't hear me. We think that what we are going through, somehow God's lost control or He's lost power and the devil's convinced us that the problem is bigger than our God. And therefore we allow an upset to happen. Something that has no power. <laughs> I want you to hear this. The devil only has the power that you give him. So if he's winning, you've let him win. He's already beaten, defeated. So we have this uh, Gideon thing here, and here he is, and, and Gideon is, uh, he's, the people have been pushed out, and, and here's, here's, here's where we sit. We sit in the churches, and this is the caves, and the, and the clefts, and the shelters. And, and we sit in here, and we wonder, why do I keep losing? I'm one of God's children, and why do I keep losing? And then, and then God gives an answer. This, watch, watch what the answer is. Go on to the next one. Judges chapter 6, 8 through 10. Look what it says. It says, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. <laughs> now, you all got to see this. I brought you up out of Egypt. There's this confidence coming out of him. Can you hear it? I, I, didn't I bring you out of Egypt and out of slavery? I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and I delivered you from the hand of all of your oppressors. Like these, I, this, this uh, inflection, like God just like, to me, is like, do I have to show you this again? And look what it says, I drove them out before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. And then watch. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. And, and I started thinking about us, believers, followers of Christ. 
And I started thinking about how we get beat up and we just kind of sit back and take and we go, well, the enemy's too big. The enemy's stronger than God is. And, and, and if I'm on God's team, then why is all this happening? And he says, you, you've put other things before me. If you put me back in charge, if you make me number one again, you can do all things. So here's this battle going on. And, and, and so the, I, I wanted to get to um, the steps of the march. Go on to the next slide for me. The, ver, the very first S in the word steps is solidify. And, and I, I want to say this. Um, I, you're going to hear that stuff over there. That's another group worshiping, so praise God for them. So I just wanted to try to keep your attention here. But here, this is what I wanted to say. Solidify, solidify, solidify. I, I, I went to a, uh, a concert with uh, Christine and, and uh, Chris and Nick, and we went down to Nissan Pavilion, and we were watching Rascal Flats. And we, we get there. We're, I don't know where Chris and Nicky had gone. Uh, uh, Christine and I were standing there, and, and we had walked like, <laughs> seemed like, five, six miles to get to where we were supposed to be. And we followed this couple that uh, were, were going in as well, and, and uh, they were pumped. I mean, the guy had a cowboy hat on. She had a cowboy hat. Uh, the girl had on boots with a skirt. and she, I mean, they were, they were set to go, absolutely set to go. They walked the entire 14 miles uphill both ways. They walked with us, and, and, and they, when we got there, uh, we got to the front, and we got there, and, and uh, we're getting ready to go in, and I see panic go across his face. And I'm listening in now, and he says, the tickets are home on the kitchen counter. So then frantically he's calling, and, and I don't know what happened, but I started thinking about this Christianity thing. We get ready for sure. I mean, we get our Bibles out, we get our church clothes on, we, we get prepared in worship, we, we do all these things. We try to look good, we try to act good, we try to put on a, a different uh, behavior. I always make fun of my wife. We went to racing and my wife turned redneck on me like she camouflage hat. I'm like, I don't even know this woman. And, and uh, she's from Long Island, New York. They don't do that stuff. And, uh, but we put on this persona. We put on this persona. And, and what I'm afraid of, this is what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid we're going to, there's going to be a whole lot of people that have walked a long way, that have spent lots of time, and they're going to get to the gates, and there's going to be a panic that they didn't bring the only thing that allows them to get in Jesus Christ the the only thing I'm going to make some of you mad <laughs> Judges chapter 6 go on to the next slide Judges chapter 6 12 through 13 it says when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon he said the Lord is with you mighty warrior I think that was very interesting here's a guy that's hiding and God called him a mighty warrior. There's a calling on you even when you don't know it. Even when you don't know it. You look at yourself the way you want to, but God doesn't see you that way. And I'm going to show you that here in a second too. And look what it says. He says, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, look, this is the same question we were just talking about. If the Lord is with us, why did all this happen to us? Have you all used that before? I underlined it so I could talk about that. If the Lord is with us, why did all this happen to us? And again, we go back to, he's not number one. I, I was watching um, uh, I Am Second. Has anybody seen the website, I Am Second? If you haven't seen the website, I Am Second, go on the so uh, I am second and watch I am second. I was watching uh, Jeb, Jeb Robertson. And Jeb Robertson, he's the younger brother off of Duck Dynasty. If you've watched that, some of you know who I'm talking about. And, and Jeb comes on there and Jeb, says, Jeb is talking about, listen, here's an, another opportunity for you to get things right. Here it is. Watch. Jeb says, I grew up with faith. I grew up with parents that had faith and I got off track. 
And he said, I was taking every pill I could find. He said, I was drinking everything I could find. And he said, one day I got home, and all, they brought me inside, and all of the family is sitting in the room. And he said, they looked at me, and they said, are you ready to get your life straightened out right now? And Jeff's answer was this. I've been waiting for someone to ask me that. I believe God wants me to say this to you right now. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what battles. I don't know what pain you're going through. I don't know what kind of family struggles. I don't know what kind of marriage. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I, I want to say this to you because I believe God told me to tell you this. Are you ready for it to change right now? It can. Solidify. Gideon is wanting to make sure that God's on his team. I, I think we sit in the church, and I think sometimes we sit here. Listen, church folks, I, church folks, I'm talking, if you're a visitor and you don't know, church folks, I'm talking to you for a second. I, I think we have come in here, and we've sat down in a church pew, and we, we're, we're afraid, and we think that we're being attacked, and then there's the same question, and, and he says all those things. He says, remember the miracles? And, and he's, he, he's asking about the last generation. And, and, and where, where is this God? Where are you? Where, where is the God that was the same yesterday, today, and forever? He doesn't seem real. And I think we've started filling church pews, and we started playing a church game, and we, we just sit in here, and we don't really do anything. And I want you to solidify your faith. I want you to know what you believe. You're, we're singing, I believe, I believe, I believe. But do you really believe? Let's put it, let's put it to uh, 1 John 5, 13 says that you may know that you have eternal life. You can get it straight right now. You don't have to guess. You, what it is, and I know this is tough. I know this is tough. Watch, go on to the next one, Acts 16, 31. This is it. I'm going to make this as plain and as simple as it can possibly be. And this is where you're going to get mad at me. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I think for 2,000 years we've been fighting this. Paul said that there was a group of men that came to him and said, it's salvation plus circumcision and it's salvation plus. And we've, we've put together, listen church, I, 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 I want to get real serious with you right now. We've put together religion that says it's Jesus plus, Jesus plus, and you can get there. Go on to the next verse, I want to show you this. I think he's talking to us. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Jesus plus gospel is really no religion at all. It's no gospel at all. Evidently, some of the people that are throwing you into confusion are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach, let them be under God's curse. I'm going to mess with your theology. There is absolutely... We have, a, we have a drunk that will come stumbling in one week and then he comes in the next week. The first week it's grace. The next week we want to condemn. This is where I'm going to mess with your theology. You can become a Christian, a believer in Christ, and live the way that you want and do anything that you want to do. Yeah, I'm messing with you now, right? I, I, uh, I, I put myself in this father thing. God the Father. I desperately want my kids to do right. And I will discipline them when they are doing wrong. But none of that changes my relationship with my children if they do wrong. 
if they live the way they want, if they go and do anything. The, the relationship, listen to what I'm saying. We've messed this up. He loves us. There is nothing, there is absolutely nothing you can do. You can try to pretend to be holy. There's going to be some very holy people in hell that have eliminated a whole bunch of things. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Um, go, back to the, go back to Acts 16, 31. I forgot the 3,000 there. This is what I want to tell you about. When, when the law was given, when, because that's what the problem was, that's when we were living under law, and that's what we keep combining with this gospel. It's just Jesus, and we keep trying to put law in there, and we try, keep trying to put rules on there. But I want you to see this. This was awesome. It, when, when the law was given to Moses, when the law was given to Moses, watch this, 3,000 people died. When the Holy Spirit was given at the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people were alive. Do you see the difference between law and grace? There is, I, I want to free somebody right now. There is nothing that you can do to get to heaven without Jesus. Nothing. You can't come to church enough. You can't read your Bible enough. You can't sing enough praise and worship. It's not going to work. It's simply, you can get rid of all of that. Throw it all away. All you need is Jesus. That's it. Church, you're not hearing me. We've confused people on this. We've beat people up with this. And I'm not saying it's a simple thing. I'm not saying that at all. When it says the Lord Jesus Christ, there's the, there's the master, the man, and the Messiah. It says Lord, which means master. It means that's the person that I go to that gives me direction. It says Jesus, which means that he was a historical person, a historical person that we put our faith in. There's enough fact that, to prove that he lived. And then it says the Christ which means that he went into a grave and everybody thought he was done and then a couple of days later he'd come out and he'd conquered death. So I'm not saying, listen, I'm not saying that this is easy. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that's all that you have to do is believe that he did those things and you can come to know Christ. When you do that, here's what happens. You realize how much you were loved and the sin that he forgave you of and then you repent and then you fall in love with him. I'm messing with your theology. It is not. Listen to me. Jesus plus anything is nothing. Jesus is everything. Don't add anything to that. It's simply Jesus. Sound like last week's message, don't it? Go on to the next one for me. Trust. Trust. Judges chapter 6, go on to the verse for me. Judges 6, 14 through 16, it says, The Lord turned to him and said, now Watch this, I love this. Go in the strength that you have. <laughs> Wait a minute. I get it, Gideon, you don't think that you can do anything. But go in the strength that you have and save Israel of Mid the Midian's hands. Am I, am I not sending you? Uh, then he says, watch, watch what he says. Pardon me, <laughs> my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in, in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Have you played that game with him before? Wait a minute, God, you, you know about my relationship or you know about the drug habit or you know about my addiction. You, you know about the stuff that I'm going through. How can you use me? And then Jesus or God says, uh, um, the Lord answered, I will be with you and you will strike down the Midianites, leaving none alive. Man. Man, just believe in what he says. I, I uh, go on to the next slide. I, I think we really blow this one too. Philippians 4.13, I'm glad you all started out with this song because it fits right into what I'm talking about. And here's the thought. Listen to the thought. We grow up 
At least I did. Uh, and this is probably nobody's fault but my own. It was just my own theology and my own uh, religion coming into play. But we had this mentality. I, I am learning that Jesus Christ is way bigger than the box that I had put him in. And, and we, we, we read this, but we don't believe this. We get sick, and the scripture says, and we went and did this from my great aunt and uncle, it says, if, the sick, if they're sick, put oil on them and pray over them. It, 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 we can do all things through Christ. And we grew up, I grew up with this mentality that uh, somehow God fit in this box and he didn't do the miracles anymore. That somehow that was the past Jesus. I grew up that way. I grew up that way. And I'm not putting blame on anybody. It was probably just my own. That's probably the devil just fighting with me. But, and what I'm learning is he can. He can do all things. He can do all things. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. I hope we get that. I hope you get solidified in your faith. And I meant to talk about this too. A part of the solidification of, of our faith and part of this understanding who God is is our baptism. And we're going to do that. Matter of fact, the lady that son passed away a couple weeks ago, and I did the she's going to get baptized on the 12th. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. And, and, and the re, this is what I want you to do. And I'm going to go back to that. I'm visiting that back again because I, I, I wanted to say this for sure. Baptism, this is what the cool part about baptism is. Baptism is, is uh, I, I can, Christine and I are, are obviously married, and I could, have, I could have loved her 100% committed to her the rest of my life without uh, that ceremony. I could have done that. I love, I love the woman. I love her with all my heart. So I could have loved her 100%, 100% committed to her and never had that ceremony. I could have done that. But there's something awesome about that ceremony. When I get to stand up in front of all my friends and family and say, I'm giving her 100% of me, and I want my friends and family to be a witness that I'm, and hold me accountable to, to that. That's what baptism is. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? So there's something, and I don't know how many, and it's not, not anything to be scared of. What, I, what I'm trying to tell you is solidify it. Let's get it grounded. Hey, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm saying that I love him. Well, let's put, the, let's put our money where our mouth is, and let's, let's do the ceremony. Let's say, God, I openly and blatantly and boldly profess that I'm giving you my life, and the devil can't have any of it. All right, back to where I was at. I can do all things. And then the next one. Eliminate the one to it for me. Isn't this what we do? We have all these battles and, and there's all these uh, fights that we go across. And, and if you watch the finals, what it is, it's one and done. You, you continue. If you win, you get to go on to the next one and then you keep, you keep eliminating. And, and, and that's what happens here in the story of Gideon. If you go on to the uh, Judges chapter 7, verses 2 and 3, it says, The Lord said to Gideon, <laughs> You have too many men. I, I love this. You have too many men. There's 100,000 Midianites. And he says, uh, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands. Or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave the Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 remain. So, so here's Gideon. I love this story, right? So Gideon's thinking, all right, I'm going to go take... Midi, the Midianites, I'm going to win this battle and I'm getting ready, he's getting ready to go out and he goes, God, we only have 31,000 people and, and God says, I know, and he goes, good I'm glad you know, God, because I'm, we're in trouble, 31,000 people against 100,000 people we can't, we can hardly, we won't even be able to kill their animals, I mean, we're, we're in trouble, and God says, okay, I got it here's the plan, Gideon this is what we're going to do. And, and I, I bet Gideon's waiting for either multiple men to show up or maybe he's wanting God to bring machine guns or something like that. And, and he's like, God, what is the plan? And he goes, get rid of people. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, no, God, we're the ones that have the 31. They have the 100. <laughs> like, let's, we're going to have to negotiate this. He says, no, you tell them if they're afraid. 
If they're afraid, you send them home. I want you to solidify your faith today. Because Scripture talks about faith unwavering. And if we have the faith of a mustard seed, if we just had a little bit of faith. Listen, this is scriptural. I can do all things as, as literal scripture. If we had the faith of a mustard seed, he's not asking you to have big faith. That's not what he said. He said, I want you to have a little bit of faith. If you'll just have a little bit of faith, you can move mountains. And so here's this, here's this big battle that's getting ready to take place. And, 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 and Gideon's really confused. And, and what I'm asking you today is there's some stuff that's clouded your view or gotten in the way that you need to eliminate. It very well might be some people. My, um, my grandfather, he got sick, and we had, we had bought, uh, just for fun, we had bought him one of those Furbies. <laughs> and uh, my grandfather got really sick, and, and we went over to my grandmother's, and she had, she had gotten rid of everything in the house. Listen, if God wants to answer my prayers, I don't want anything in the house that could possibly come between me and him so my husband can be healed. And she went home and threw out that Furby, and she should have, because that thing was creepy. <laughs> it would burp and burp out the other end. And, and then just would wake up in the middle of the night. It was a weird thing, but here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying invitation here listen what has taken priority over Jesus in your life I'm going to tell you it could even be some good things that's why I like that I am second In my marriage, I want to be number two. I want my wife to put God first in everything that she does. So what I'm saying is, this could be very, this could be, you could think you're doing a righteous, great thing, and you could think, you know what I hear, you know what a big excuse for not coming to church is? I, I'm, this is my family day. Is it your work? Is it your money? Is it family? Is it sports? Is it your hobby or your recreation? Is it your music? Is it a relationship? What's gotten in the way of you winning? Why are you sitting on the sidelines saying, God, where are you? It goes back to that first verse. He said, I told you not to worship other gods. You are more than capable. You are more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in you. But if you're going to worship something else, you're going to lose. If you'll put me back on my throne, if you'll let me be Lord in your life, if you'll do it my way, and here's the thing, we try, to, we, we try to outthink God. Well, God didn't know. God, God didn't know that we could, we could do better if we didn't get married and we would make more money from the way that the government... So God didn't think all that through. And so we start doing this kind of stuff in our mind or, or God didn't know. And we start trying to outthink God. God didn't know about how our society was going to be and how, how, they were going to, how they were going to tax us and all that. And so we start trying to outthink God. And he says, you know, do you trust me? Do you trust me? I gave you a game plan. I thought it all through. I detailed every single bit of it. I laid it all out. And if you, if you keep wondering why you keep having battles and keep failing and keep having battles and keep failing, it's because I'm not Lord. You've put idols in front of me. You think that you're smarter than me. You think that you have a better plan for your life than I do. And so we sit in the church and we hear all this and we don't, nothing ever really changes. 
We come in and we go, okay, I like what he said, but I still don't think God knew what I was going through. I don't think he really understands my situation and, and how I'm supposed to get by. And, and, and we think that that's for other people. And, and so we do this insanity Christianity and we, we, don't, we can't understand. We, we keep, can't figure out why we keep getting the, the, the upset, why these little storms keep knocking us over. We, we can't figure that out. And he says, put me first. Would you put me first? Judges chapter 7, 4 and 5. <laughs> Here he is again. But the Lord said to Gideon. <laughs> Here he is. Here he is. Look. All right, God. You cut me down. 21,000 people. 10,000, 100,000. Okay. You're definitely going to have to give me some bazookas or, or something right here because now it's one. Now that means I'm going to have to kill 10 people myself and everybody on my. And for us to win, everybody's got to stay alive and everybody's got to kill 10 people. That's the only way we can win. That seems impossible. So, God, you better have some weapons of mass destruction somewhere hidden so that we can use. And God says, oh, I got a plan. And Gideon's like, Yes. And he says, Get rid of more people. What? What? Look what it says. It says, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say the one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say the one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, Separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps from those who kneel to drink. Now here's what I believe God was telling those folks or telling Gideon. If you're putting your head down in the middle of a battle, you're going to get beat. If you get distracted by some things, you're going to be overthrown. So what, Gideon, what God was telling Gideon is, I want the men, this is what I want. I want the men that are cupping the water and bringing it to their mouth because their eyes are open and they're aware of the enemy. Are you aware of the enemy? He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. I, I, I believe I shared this not too long ago. I was in Abundant Life, and, and uh, um, I was sitting in the like, second or third row, and this guy dressed up with his devil bald head, and, and they changed his voice to like a demonic voice, and he came over and he stood right beside me. And it was one of the most significant moments in my life because I heard the truth for the first time uh, in a way that heard this as truth for the first time, not the truth, but heard this truth for the first time. And this guy come up to me in an all-black robe and bald head and painted white and eyelids, super, you know, the eyelids painted black and he had the whole look and he walked up beside me and his voice came out like a demon and he looked right at me and he goes, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hope you guys hear the devil say that. He wants to sound pretty. He wants to tell you how things are, are good and how it won't hurt you that bad or you can get by with it or, or it doesn't really matter. It, and the whole thing is if you could see this game being played out, he's, he's setting you up for massive failure and he's going to destroy you and he's going to destroy your testimony and destroy you. You're not going to be, you're, you're, you're going to lose a generation. You could possibly lose the next generation because the devil deceived you. And your children are going to fail and we man, let's let's be really careful on this. Our grandchildren and, and, and the generations to come, they they're look. I pray that my great great grandchildren know that their great great grandfather lived for Jesus. Wouldn't that be awesome that that legacy gets passed down? Matthew twelve forty five. I want you to see this if we're not careful. Some of you have eliminated some things and you've gotten rid of some demons in your life. Matter of fact, I was talking to a young man this week and he said um, he'd fallen apart again. He'd gone a significant amount of time without drugs and alcohol and, and uh, he said, I want to blatantly and openly tell you for the last six months I've been trying to figure out how to not wake up in the morning. And what I believe is if we're not careful and we let these things back in, Scripture says that it comes back seven times stronger. 
So an invitation right now. Don't let it back in. Get it straight right now. Eliminate. It would be silly. <laughs> it would be silly for us to go home and start a diet and go to the grocery store and say, well, I'm going to keep uh, the Twinkies here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm guilty. <laughs> well, I'm going to start a diet, but just in case, <laughs> keep me a secret stash somewhere I can beg you for. Well, isn't that foolish? One of my favorite parts in the movie Fireproof is when the, the fellow had a the addiction to the internet and pornography and he goes outside and he takes a baseball bat. Listen, he takes a baseball bat and he smashes that computer to pieces because you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to, I don't want to gain the whole world and lose my own soul. I don't want to have all these things that I think make me feel good and get to the, the gates and not have my ticket. If there are some things in your life that have become number one, eliminate. Eliminate them. And then go on to the next one for me. What's the purpose? <laughs> you're called to win. You're called to win. The P is for purpose and you're called to win. Go on to Judges chapter 7, verse 9 through 11. It says, During the night the Lord said to Gideon, Get up and go down against the camp because I'm going to give it to your hands. I don't know uh, what you're battling, but the Lord says He wants to deliver it. He wants to set you free. He wants to let you have power. You are called to be more than a conqueror. Greater is He that is in you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. If God is for you, then who can stand against you? And he, He's given you that warrior mentality, and He says, I want you to win. I want you to win. The enemy will be delivered into your hands. You are called to win. Now look what it says. Watch. And then it says, if you're afraid, here He is being... Here he has been given all these instructions and all these tests have been passed by God. And, and still, because still some of you in here, I'm still afraid. I know what God wants me to do. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm still afraid. So when the invitation is given, I'm probably not going to do anything but walk out of here and be the same again. And, and the problem is that that's the, that's the devil making us afraid. And this is what he says. That I want, this is what I want you to hear. I want you to hear the same thing God told Gideon. Because watch this. This is really awesome. Watch. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant, Pura, and listen to what they are saying afterwards. You will be encouraged to attack them. So he and Pura, his servant, going to the next one, went, Gideon arrived just as a man was telling his friend his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. Watch what it says. His friend responded, this could be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. What I'm trying to tell you is, what I think God wants you to know is, the enemy is afraid of you. He knows that you can win. He knows that you can overcome. And he, he, he wants to tell you today, some of you, he wants to tell you this very thing. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to know the enemy already knows that you can win. And I put on the bottom there, it's not... We've got to recognize who you are. The enemy knows who you are, and the enemy also knows whose you are. The enemy's afraid. He's afraid, and this was pre in advance, and he told him, and then, and then the last one here, go on to the next slide. And I put a picture of a jump ball. We've got to move. We've got to start. You've got to start. Go on to the verse there, Judges chapter 7, 19 through 21. says, Gideon and the hundred men uh, with him reached the edge of the camp. Now, he's only got 300 men. And Gideon's like, uh, all right, what are we using for weapons? <laughs> There's 300 of us <laughs> against 100,000. Now, what are we using for weapons? And, and uh, <laughs> he says... I'm going to give you some trumpets and some jars. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do something ridiculous. I, I started thinking about 
how God sometimes asks us to do stuff that's not logical. Just to trust Him. I started thinking about Abraham being asked to give up his own son. That seems absurd. I started thinking about when he asked for the man to go down and be dipped seven times into the, into the water and his cancer would disappear, I mean his leprosy would disappear. I started thinking about Jericho, the march around there. Here, this is, what, this is the way we're going to beat this city, guys. You're going to march around it seven times. And then what? That's it. Okay. <laughs> and then I want, I want to say this to you. God wants to speak beyond your logic. His ways are higher than your ways. So what you think that He hasn't thought through, He's already thought about. Somehow we start doing thinking for God. God, there's no way. There's no way you could take care of me if I did it that way. If I did it, if we did it the way that the scripture says, if we did it that way, there's no way God could take care of me. And, and the reality is that He is way bigger than you. Quit making yourself God. So He takes 300 men, and, and this is what He does. He, he, uh, he sends them out and, and, and there's this unity and there's this obedience. And, and wouldn't it have been funny had only one guy done it? Like that uh, commercial where, the, uh, where they do the, the flash mob. Does anybody remember the commercial where they do the flash mob and the one guy starts dancing and everything and they're like, you got changed to 3 o'clock or whatever. I can't remember the commercial. But, but wouldn't, it have been, wouldn't it have been strange if only one person would have uh, uh, broke the... Broke the, the um, Whatever it was called there, I can't remember how they, the the uh, the jar, yeah, the trumpets and, and blew his trumpet. That would have looked really strange, but there was this unity together. And and then here's what I wanted to say about that. Um, he said, "This is what we're supposed to do. Watch." The three companies blew their trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding their right hands and the trumpets they were to blow. And then they shouted, "Watch! This is how they won." This is how they won. The sword of the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran crying as they fled. The name of the Lord is illogical as it sounded, is as strange as it seemed. The name of the Lord brought victory. Luke chapter 10, 17 through 19. I'm going to finish with this. The, 17, or the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. I have this awesome vision in my head I don't know what battle you're going through I don't know what uh, demons are battling you I don't know what addiction or struggle is going through but I have this I have this mental picture this I have this awesome picture that when we speak the name of Jesus they have to hit their knees in the middle of my sin or in my temptation if I'll speak over the name of Jesus, those demons have to hit their knees. When I think that everything is illogical and if I speak the name of Jesus, the devil has to hit his knees. He wins. If we'll be obedient, if we'll put him back on his throne, Nothing can stop us. So the, here's the invitation, same as to Jep. Are you ready to solidify this? Are you ready to say, God, I want you to be number one. I'm going to put you first. 
Are you ready to, to eliminate some things that might be causing some problems? Are you, are, you ready, are you ready to move and take some action? Or do we just keep playing church? I want to bring the band up and we're going to do an invitation here. If you'll stand with me in prayer. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Can we leave the lights on just for a second? With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, because this is important. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Here it is. I believe. I've been battling this. I've been even in the church battling this. I've been sitting in a pew for years battling this. Or maybe you're a very first time uh, visitor or maybe you just come in lost and, and, and here's the answer. This is the answer. Believe. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now, he's not going to just let you do whatever you want, and I hope that I didn't offend anybody when I said that because I definitely believe that he chastises and disciplines those that he loves, but he, he definitely loves us, and there's nothing, there's nothing that I can do. My righteousness is his filthy rags. Anything that I can do to please him, is just it's literally just Jesus. It's literally Jesus and nothing else. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the Scripture says that we believe that he died for our sins. We believe that he rose again. We believe that he conquered death and we believe that he did it for us. So here's the invitation. I, I want to solidify this. Pastor, I want Jesus Christ to be Lord of my life. I want him to forgive my sins. I want to repent of my sins. I want to run from that. And the scripture says if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So get right now, if this is you, and I, again, I don't care how long you've played church. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's a family member. I don't care if you've been a pillar in your church. It's just Jesus. And you say, Pastor, I want to know him. If that's you, you say, I'm, I want to put my faith and trust into him today. If that's you, would you just look up at me? I don't want to miss. Amen. Amen. I don't want to miss. Don't let me miss. Amen. Don't let me miss it. Those that just looked up at me, here's the prayer. This is the prayer. It's not a magic prayer. I'm not giving you a chant to say. It's simply this. It's a cry of your heart. God, I need you. I want you to be Lord in my life. I know who I am, and I know I can do nothing without you. Would you save me? Again, it's nothing special about that prayer. It's literally the cry of your heart. Fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. There's some, some of us Christian folk, I guess we would say, We've let some stuff get in the way, right? We remember the miracles. We keep looking for the miracles. We heard about miracles. And we're sitting on the sidelines watching the, the, the underdogs keep winning in our life. We keep watching silly things keep winning in our life. And, and, and when we look back and think about it, we've put some other things in front of Jesus. And you say, Pastor, I'm, I'm rearranging some things right now in my heart. I'm going to put some priority on Jesus Christ and there's going to be some things eliminated. And there's going to be some things put back into the proper place because I want to win. And if that's you, would you just look up at me and say, God, there are some things I'm battling and I want to win. I want to win. And I've got to put Jesus back on the throne. Amen. Amen. All over. All over. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing the same song we did last week. There's power in the name of Jesus. When you sing this, I want you to visualize those demons falling to the ground, hitting their knees. I want you to visualize that drug addiction disappearing. I want you to visualize that marriage coming back together and the devil taking his hands off of your marriage. I want you to visualize it taking off of your relationships. I want you to visualize the demons being taken away from, thrown out of your children's lives. 
This is what we're going to do today. We're going to give it all to the name of Jesus. Every single chain can be broken this morning in the name of Jesus. It might not all make sense, but we're going to offer to him because he has the plan. It's the best plan. He can't do anything less. So as we start to sing this song, if you have something that you need to kill here at the... This is called an altar because this is a killing place. There's some of you that got some stuff that need to be killed. It needs to be killed right here. Some of you need to get, come forward and solidify your faith. Some of you need to, to jump on board and help us reach this community. Some of you just need to join the army and say, hey, I want to join the army. But we're going to do this. Let's, we're going to do this in only one way. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ. So as we sing this song, I'm, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm not begging anybody. I just believe chains can be broken today. And I'm going to ask you to sing this song and, and shout the name of Jesus and worship the Lord here. And if it means coming down here and getting rid of some things, do that. I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Would you lead us in worship? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Here we go. There is power in the name of Jesus. Would you give it to him? To break every chain, break every chain, break. Can we get the words up back there? Is that possible? There is power. I need some men. I need some men to come pray up here with these men. Would you come pray with somebody? There is power in the name of Jesus. There's no reason to wait. There are some things that need to be eliminated right now. There's a God that needs to be put back on the throne. I need somebody right here. I need somebody to pray right here. I need somebody right here to pray. Somebody. Hey. Come and give your children to God and ask God to take the demons away from your children and deliver them to your children. Would you say, God, I'm going to put you back in first place in my life. God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm not going to sit on the sidelines. I'm going to put my faith into you. You're bigger than me. I need somebody to pray right here. I need some folks to pray right here. Somebody right there. Right there. Kim, can you get over there? Right there. There's power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hey, sing it out. Let's sing it. Let's, let's, let's make the devil run out of here today. Let's get him out of that. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Somebody, God, I don't want to, I never wanted to do this. Somebody's still waiting. God, there's a battle going on.
somebody is still waiting. Your heart's pounding right now. It's you. I, I'm not going to beg. I don't want to do this. Somebody, God wants to know this is your chance. Would you put me first? Amen. Amen. Sing it out. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for Jesus. God, we are nothing without Jesus. Lord Jesus plus nothing. Lord, let us make him Lord in our lives. Let, him put, let us put him first. Lord, we praise you for what you're doing here. God, break the chains right now. There's some that are battling some relationship problems, some drug addiction, some suicidal thoughts. God, there's some depression going on here. There's some financial problems, God, and we're just praying right now in the name of Jesus. God, there's somebody that's hurting right now that's going through some pain. God, I'm not a faith healer or any of those things, but God, you are. You are the healer. So, God, we're asking you to fix things right now. God, we're surrendering our lives back over. We are eliminating things in our life. We are putting you first. God, we praise you for what you're doing here in the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you. We thank you for who you are. In your precious name we pray. So be it. You're dismissed.